A while back, I went to V-Stock, and they were having a buy two, get one free sale, so I picked up three Nintendo 64 games. The first was Chopper Attack, a ridiculously fun, albeit short, flying game that I would recommend anyone check out. The second was Arrow Fighters Assault, a sucky flight sim that has given me headaches. The third was... Yeah, you don't want to know. Trust me, the less you know about that third game, the better. It's got stickers from five bargain bin stores that tried and failed to sell it. The cartridge is so damaged that it barely works anymore, and trying to get the game to work is more fun than actually playing it. I don't know why I didn't return it since the game barely works. I guess it was just so bad that it fascinated me. Sometimes my own stupidity astounds me. But nobody wants to hear about that. Let's take a look at Arrow Fighters Assault. Aero Fighters Assault is broken into eight different levels. The first stage you have to fly into Tokyo, which has been flooded, and kill some walker mech that's trying to destroy a weapons plant. You know, if Tokyo has been flooded, and even worse, it's because of a bomb that was detonated at the Arctic Circle, I think you've got bigger problems than trying to save a weapons plant. Like, for example, the entire rest of the world being flooded too. The first thing I have to bring up is the graphics. Not so much that the game looks bad, it just looks bad in motion. The animations look like about half the animation frames are missing, and everything that moves just looks jerky. All of the levels are completely open spaces with sky or water as far as the eye can see, plus flooded at indistinct distinguishable buildings everywhere, so the entire level looks the same. It's disorienting because there's no terrain to tell you where you are, and it's also boring because everywhere you look is the same. There's also no music, adding to the boring factor. Enemies are pretty much just blips and dots, and you can't tell what enemies are until they're too close and passing you by. And between the small enemies and the distance fog, you can't see enemies at a distance unless the game puts crosshairs around one for you. The first time I played this game, I was just confused. The jerky animations were messing with me, and I couldn't figure out where the enemies were, where my wingmen are, and trying to fight enemies just didn't work. Plus, the controls are crap, and it takes forever to turn. Pulling a 180 takes about 10 full seconds, and you can't do flips, somersaults, or U-turns because you can't turn higher than going straight up. Each playable plane has four weapons, a basic gun, a special attack, a missile, and a decoy. The special attack can only be used twice, so it's pretty much useless, and because the graphics are so jumpy, the controls so sluggish, and the enemies so tiny, trying to kill the basic enemies with your standard gun is like trying to throw darts at a bumblebee while riding in an ATV and sitting on a paint mixer. Instead, you kill enemies by flying straight at them so that your missile weapon, which never runs out of ammo, can lock on, you fire it, and the enemy pretty much automatically dies. So you really have to get out of the Star Fox and Rogue Squadron mindset because your gun only does anything against the bosses. I can appreciate what they were trying to do here. They were trying to make a realistic flight sim and give it a fantasy setting. It's just not well executed, to say the absolute least. The game has four planes, plus two that are nearly impossible to unlock without cheating, and near as I can tell, the only differences between the planes are their weapons. I use this generic anime looking guy because his basic weapons are a Gatling gun and a four-way missile, which makes it a lot easier to fire at enemies. The Husky Rusky can fire one bullet and one missile at a time, and his missiles don't kill anything in one hit, so he's useless. The Ninja guy fires ninja stars that have horrible homing and almost never hit anything, so he's useless. And the female pilot unless you unlock the other one, has a gun that never needs to reload, but her missiles don't home on enemies at all! She's only any use for fighting bosses, but there are eight levels, and two don't revolve around boss battles. Have fun trying to beat the game, sir! So for those of you keeping score, four playable characters, and only one is not useless. By the way, the other unlockable female pilot, she has the same gun and missiles as Anime Guy. They knew what was up. The three planes that you don't choose serve as your wingmen, which, quote, help you out during missions, end quote, but if you thought the wingmen in Star Fox were annoying, you will despise the wingmen in this game. Hell, you'll despise them anyway. The objective of almost every level is to destroy the boss, and your wingmen not only don't attack the boss, they seem to stay as far away from it as possible. I know this because when you get asked to rescue a wingman, you're told what altitude they're at, and they're always at the exact opposite end of the map as the boss. Even finding a wingman that's asking for help is a pain in the ass. The wingman in question is not marked on your map or indicated in any way. All you get is you're told what altitude they're at and what general direction they are in relation to you. And good luck if you're turning when you get the notification. Is it 3 o'clock from where I am now or from where I was 5 seconds ago when you started talking? 
The only constructive thing they do is they kind of half-heartedly attack the normal enemies, which doesn't help you at all, and it's much faster to just kill the basic enemies yourself. I don't expect the AI to play the game for me, but the AI is specifically programmed not to help you! The Wingman and Star Fox also had entertaining dialogue, they had endearing personalities, and they did things to help you. Peppy gave you tips, Slippy showed you the boss's health bars, and Falco got shot a lot. Arrow Fighter's Assault just has a surfer dude, a Russian dude, a foreign dude, and a girl. None of them have any personality, and none of them do anything to help. The only reason to bother with rescuing Wingmen is that the game has four hidden levels that have very high requirements to unlock. You can get four stars in each level, one for keeping your wingman alive, one for not using your defensive weapon, and I mean not using it once, one for not taking any damage, and one for not using your special attack. I can understand punishing you for killing your wingman or for sucking at the game, but the game punishes you for using weapons, for trying to have fun, and you get screwed out of a star for taking a single hit? Screw you in the eye! There's no way to get health back during a level, and I'm also not supposed to use any decoys. Are you excited? Expecting me to cheat to unlock the hidden levels? Anyway, I beat the first level and wait bonus. I got two bonus stars That's never happened before. How the hell did I even do that? Seriously? I have no idea how I got those stars the second level of the game has you have to kill two gigantic water vessels. This level is a pain because the two ships are flanked by a ton of frigates that take so many hits to destroy that they might as well be indestructible, and they fire barrages of missiles at you every time you even attempt to approach the boss. Ow! 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 STOP THAT! Jeez, it's like missiles are trying to fly up your tailpipe all the damn time in this game. You can even switch to a rear view and watch as the missiles materialize from out of nowhere. Do you see that little line leading from the edge of the screen to my plane? That means that an enemy is following you or has locked onto you, and since it takes forever to turn and it takes forever to try and shake an enemy, it gets to the point that you just ignore the marker and wait until the enemy gets bored and flies away rather than actually try to shake him. This game is kind of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES. The game starts out decent, and then it nosedives into being frustrating after you start thinking you might enjoy yourself. Once you kind of adjust to the mindset the game wants you to have, i.e. take out enemy fighters first, then focus on killing the boss, the first two levels aren't that bad. The controls are still stiff, but the game is halfway enjoyable, but level 3 is where the game starts pulling out all the stops to piss you off. Level 3 is timed, and you have to destroy a huge-ass bomber that's being flanked by other huge-ass bombers. The major problem with this level is that the standard enemies can launch decoys and deflect your missiles, so whereas before you could destroy enemies in seconds, now it takes minutes to kill one enemy, either get lucky and hope they don't deflect your missile, or get luckier and shoot them down with bullets. Your wingman will get into trouble constantly, and because you don't get much time, the only way to finish this level is to ignore your wingman as they get butchered. And because the smaller bombers flank the boss so closely, you pretty much have to get into point-blank range for your missiles to lock onto the boss, increasing the odds of getting shot down yourself and making the level even longer because you have to take so many passes at the boss! You can, of course, try to shoot down the smaller bombers, but they can take about 20 freaking missiles apiece without dying! America's Navy should be nothing but stealth bombers. These things are f***ing indestructible! And by the way, this is the EASY MODE! I'm just wondering how boned this Navy is when the same four fighters and nothing else get sent to take out an entire fleet of frigates, submarines, and leviathans, and then a fleet of stealth bombers backed up by a huge squadron of F-22s. This air force must consist of like 10 people and a janitor. I also find it amusing that this fleet is headed straight toward New York. There's at least a dozen bombers, but you only have to shoot down the big one from Captain America the First Avenger. Those other dozen or dozen and a half bombers, I'm sure they won't cause any major damage when they drop their entire payloads on one of America's primary cities, you can just let them go. Another thing that makes level 3 an epic pain in the ass is that if you die, and you will because the boss is so heavily armed and you're basically forced to attack it head on, you have to start the level over. In the first two levels, if you die, you pick up right where you left off. Enemies are still dead, boss has the same amount of health, but level 3 doesn't do that. At first I thought it was a glitch, but then I realized none of the other levels do that either! It's like, here, don't worry, we know the bosses are hard, that's why you gave you nine lives, so you don't have to kill them all at once. Psych! Good luck, butt munch! The game saves whenever you finish a level, so riddle me this. If I can die, quit the game, then reload a save and get that life back, then what is the point of having lives in the first place? 
Anyway, I can't finish level 3, so it's time to bust out the old Game Shark. I don't take pleasure from using this thing. I try to play as far as I can into games without it. I really do. Let's see, there's a code that reloads your missiles more quickly, so let's try that out. Not so tough now, are you monkey butlers? I will rain fire and brimstone upon thee! Look upon my walks and despair! <laughs> oh good, the boss is finally dead. Target, direct hit. Good job. Very, very dead. And he's still exploding. ENOUGH! HE'S DEAD! I GET IT! MOVE ON! STOP EXPLODING! The fourth level dials back the bullcrap. You're just taking down a big tank and the planes have the common decency to die in one hit. In level 5 you have to protect a space shuttle for a few minutes while it gets assaulted by ground vehicles and helicopters and you have no wingmen. Now, there's what's weird. Check out how fluid the animation is. The frame rate is like twice what it was in the previous levels, and the controls are all of a sudden way more responsive. For once, my plane doesn't feel like I'm flying a rhinoceros with a jetpack strapped to it. Holy crap, I'm having fun! I'm not fighting a bullcrap boss that takes an entire brigade's worth of firepower to kill! I don't get it. I'm trying to rack my brain to figure out what's going on here. The rest of the game has been mediocre at best and Game Shark necessitating at worst. How is this one level so fun? I'll tell you why. The game's developers were idiots. The controls are laggy and the graphics choppy because the dev team didn't realize that they were pushing the game's graphics engine to its absolute limits, so the game chugs trying to keep up with itself. Without your wingmen and with fewer enemies to render, the game runs at a smooth frame rate because it's not using all of its resources just to handle basic gameplay, and the level itself is fun because you're not fighting a broken and unfair boss. This one level is the diamond in the rough, the bright spot that shows how good this game could have been if it had been designed competently. Level 6, I broke out the Game Shark again because you have to destroy a giant fortress that's in a huge hole in the ground so it's hard to approach, and it's surrounded by turrets that cut you to shreds so it's hard to keep living. You have the option of destroying force field generators that block up some canyons, but you're in a plane, just fly over the force field. Plus the pain in the ass refuse to die planes are back. Level 7 doesn't have a boss, you just have to kill the pain in the ass refuse to die planes. This is where I finally realized what the game was going for, because the briefing lists four planes as the enemies for this level. Think about it, there are four planes that pretty much have the same abilities as your own planes, they constantly attack and antagonize your wingmen, forcing you to rescue them, you fight them repeatedly throughout the levels and have a final showdown before the final boss. They're kind of like your rivals slash evil counterparts, an elite enemy squadron to mirror your own elite heroic squadron. It's a neat idea, but why does it sound so familiar? Alright, that's a word-for-word -word description of the Star Wolf team from Star Fox 64! Except the Star Wolf team was charismatic, they were memorable villains, and they had a kick-ass theme music. These guys don't talk, and the story is so non-existent, I didn't even realize they were supposed to be your rivals. Plus, the fights with Star Wolf were challenging without being broken bullshit. You can shoot down the Star Wolf wannabes with missiles, but I think you have to run them out of decoys first, which requires surviving for a long time while being hounded by an asshole that keeps firing missiles at you, and you're not going to be able to kill these guys with bullets, so if you aren't using Surfer Dude or Russian Guy, you're just glued, screwed, and tattooed. So after you kill Team Not Star Wolf, you go to face the final enemy of the game, Lar, an alien that has been sent to eradicate all life on planet Earth. Wait, so was I fighting aliens through the whole game? Because aside from the bosses, all of the enemies are just regular Earth military aircraft. Even the ships used by not Star Wolf are just regular military aircraft. So either these aliens are long-lost cousins of the Decepticons, or they just happen to have the astronomical luck of invading the one civilization in the universe with military aircraft identical to their own. By the way, in case the game was a little too subtle in ripping off Star Fox 64 before this point, check this out. This is the final level of Star Fox 64. This is the final level of Arrow Fighter's Assault. 
It's about as subtle a ripoff as R.I.P.D. was of Men in Black. It's the same damn level. The final boss is a black alien sphere that slowly grows arms that morph into rocket launchers as you fight, and he's not even close to being the most difficult boss in the game. I don't see how this is the alien menace that's going to usher in the apocalypse, considering that a single fighter jet was able to destroy it. And the game has no ending. You fly out of the exploding tunnel, gee, just like Star Fox, and the game just cuts to a to-be-continued screen. If you've collected enough stars, you'll play some of the four bonus levels at this point, but I got at least two, usually three out of four stars in every single level, and I didn't get a single bonus mission. I can't even use the Game Shark to get the bonus missions because the game, despite admitting that I have 100% health and full weapons, will not give you those stars. I'm guessing the game detects when you're cheating, so what can you do? I suppose I could always try beating this really, really, really hard game legitimately. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't finish that sentence with a straight face. Arrow Fighters Assault is a horrible game that was a few adjustments away from being a good game. The controls are crap, the level's unnecessarily annoying, many of the weapons are useless, there's not much variety since all the enemies and bosses are basically the same, and it's not the fun kind of difficult. And even though the game isn't really a ripoff of Star Fox, it has enough similarities that it just reminds you that you could be playing a much better game. In fact, I'm going to do just that. Screw this.